Hi, I'm Harry Forbes from ARC Advisor Group. I'm here at the ARC Orlando Forum with Benson Hoagland, Vice President of Opto 22. Benson, welcome to the forum. It's nice to have you here. Thanks long, for having me. Long time no see. <laughs> no, kidding. no kidding. Well, it has been a while. Um, I saw you a couple of years ago at the forum, but mm -hmm. this year, thank you, you're sponsoring the forum. Mm -hmm. So what is Opto22 bringing to the forum? So we're at the forum this year because we have a very exciting new product that we've just introduced, uh, actually back in 2013. I wasn't here last year because we were in the middle of that launch. Uh, that new product is uh, called Groove, and it's uh, something we say is mobile made simple. Okay. Well, can you give me a little more depth in terms of what, what makes it different? What differentiates the product? Sure. So, so Groove is a, uh, is a completely different way of looking at operator interfaces and HMIs. Long, Opto's had a long history of applying you know, standard technologies that are uh, prevalent in the IT industry to industrial automation products, and that's what we've done with Groove. We noticed that there was a gap in the, in the space, uh, being you know, in the industrial automation space, uh, relative to how you can use mobile technologies to connect to assets, to machines, to equipment, pretty much any kind of automation system, whatever it might be. And, and so what we found it was very difficult to get that information into the types of devices that all of us use every single day, and more importantly, are very familiar with using. And so Groove is a platform, 100% web-based, standards-compliant way of gathering this information and making it very quick and simple to present it on uh, tablets, PCs, smartphones, even high-definition televisions. So is this something of a departure for you guys in terms of now moving to the human interface more? So that's a great question. We've had a human, uh, you know, an HMI product. Uh, called Pack Display for 20 years now, Windows-based, like many of the other pr uh, products that are on the market today. And what we found is with this mobile craze, we thought, you know, maybe what we do is take this 20-year-old technology that we have, it's well, you know, a standardized technology, it's well entrenched in many automation platforms, but once we try to take that and move it into a mobile platform, we realized this is not a very elegant experience whatsoever. So we decided to, honestly, to throw all that technology aside, let that HMI product be what it is, and start from scratch, building a mobile interface. So yeah, this is a pretty big departure from our traditional Windows-based HMI products, and also something we see is very different than anything else on the market today. Okay, it is really not an adaptation of a product at all. It's a, it's a, a clean slate kind of product designed for the smartphones and tablets that people are using. Precisely, and, and, and certainly it works with smartphones and tablets, but what we did was we built Groove on an entire, entirely 100% web-based uh, platform. So it works wonderfully with uh, any mo mobile device, tablet, smartphone, and whatnot. And the reason is because all these devices today have a modern web browser. Okay, well let me ask you about kind of the technology investment because your reputation in the market as Opto22 is to be a, a, a pretty innovative kind of company. Not the biggest, but certainly one of the most innovative companies. So. If you are laying out your technology bets for the next uh, early era of the Internet of Things, Benson, mm -hmm. what are your kind of big bets for in Opto 22? What are you making the technology investments? So we're a hardware and a software company. So I'll start from the hardware because that's essentially the part that touches the real world. So we're heavily invested in technologies that are around wireless. But we're not trying to create a new wireless standard. We're not trying to necessarily back a, a, a one player or another. We're looking at technologies that are used by you know, industries much larger than automation. So we're talking about things like 802.11, Wi-Fi, 82.15.4. Sure, that's a, a mesh networking technology. But rather than go with Zigbee or whatever, we're trying to stay very uh, you know, standardized. So from the hardware perspective, uh, it's, it's wireless. Now you start to move up the chain a little bit, and one of the most important technologies that's been for us over the past two decades has been uh, TCP IP. Uh, everything we do, from our controllers to our I.O. to today's uh, systems, especially the one built on Groove, is based upon the Internet suite of protocols. So that's a very important technology piece for us. Then you have other technologies that are associated a little bit more closely with industrial automation. One of those happens to be OPC. As you may remember, we were a founding member of OPC back in 1995. Um, and today we have OPC UA, which is, uh, I think brings a whole new set of opportunities to help people connect with systems and I think can help a lot of people realize the promise of Internet of Things because of the UA ar architecture. 
not tied to a particular platform. And one further part, uh, point from uh, a technology standpoint is web standards. We've been hearing a lot about HTML5 and CSS and all the uh, associated technologies with HTML5. But there's also some other important components there too. One that we call the secret sauce of Groove is a technology called scalable vector graphics. And this allows us, to, uh, actually allows our customers to develop an interface for, say, a mobile device or a PC that's 100% scalable. And it's so important, and the reason why is today I might be holding a five-inch smartphone in my pocket or carrying around a seven-inch tablet, but tomorrow I don't know what those devices will look like, and I may want to run it on a PC or a, or a television set. And this ability to scale all of these graphical elements of an HMI to any of these devices is so important for our customers. Well, you're a, a, a relatively small company in the automation space compared to some of the, the giant players. Mm -hmm. How do you do this? You, you must have some strategic partners in this area to, to drive these kind of initiatives. So who are your key partners? Well, we like to say that we're big enough to matter, but small enough to care. Um, and when we also know when, we're, you know when we should be putting our resources into technology that we develop in-house, or when we should reach out to the, those partners. And in the case of, of Groove, uh, our ability to communicate to OPC UA servers is a key component of that. However, we're not an OPC server developer. So we partner with a company called Kepware out of uh, Portland, Maine. These guys really know communications. They know them better than anybody. Uh, so we've worked uh, with, uh, with Kepware to develop an interface between Groove and their OPC uh, solution, which is called Kepserver EX, to have a very uh, intuitive interface for pulling in tags and putting them on mobile devices. In some cases, less than five minutes. No programming, no coding, literally like drag and dropping. It's even easier to use than Windows HMIs. Okay, um, in terms of your product space, you, you have a new product here, mm -hmm. but what do you see as the hot areas in this kind of period of the early internet of things, if we call it that? Are, you, are there particular hot spots that you expect? Where are you expecting to see some growth? So no, no question, Groove is, uh, is the growth engine for Opto moving forward. And where we see the opportunity is in this notion of a universal interface. I think Chantelle Paulsonetti said it quite well earlier last year when she said, you know, the things that matter right now, particularly with the Internet of Things, is this notion of being able to create an interface that anybody can uh, assign to or, or connect to any kind of device. And, and that's, a, that's an important part of, of, of Groove. Okay, um, so Groove is the critical engine. Mm -hmm. You are very much kind of through your channels a global participant in a lot of diverse markets. Mm -hmm. So what are you seeing in the market now in terms of the growth in emerging markets versus the growth in developed markets and, and the, the kind of high and low growth regions of the developed world? What's, what's your feeling about this going forward? So one of the things that's interesting about some of the approaches we're taking with some of these products is I think it opens up a whole new set of opportunities for companies of, of any kind in a lot of different markets, as you just mentioned. Yes, process control can benefit discrete automation, but there's telecom, there's still IT, there is a commercial infrastructure, transportation. The, the, the opportunities are really endless. And that's where I think there's a, a, a nice culmination of the, the concepts about the Internet of Things and that architecture and the new business opportunities it's going to bring. So I think, to a certain degree, it's going to level the playing field to some degree. Um, those uh, less capital-rich uh, markets can still benefit from these technologies uh, and take themselves to the next level, while capital-rich environments like uh, that we're used to, the U.S. And, and to a certain degree, uh, China and Europe, uh, we'll, we'll certainly benefit from these as well. So is this Groove product available now, or when is it going to be available? So Groove was uh, introduced uh, uh, to the marketplace last April. And today, at this event, we've uh, introduced 2.1, version 2.1 of Groove. Uh, so it's, uh, it's rapid development for sure. So we were uh, pretty excited about what's to come. And uh, the, the remaining of this year, we have a lot going on in engineering uh, that we're very excited about uh, bringing to all the clients of, uh, of ARC and to the industry in general. Well, thank you very much. It's really been great talking to you. And come back again in the year and let us know how things have been going. Thank you. I will. Okay. This is Harry Forbes from ARC Advisory Group. And I've been talking with Benson Hoagland, Vice President of Opto22. Thank you very much.